site. Please stand by, Channel 1. Communication, switching to Channel 1. All right, here it comes. Be ready. Roger. Switch control to manual override. Yo, what's happening? It's Mikey. If you are interested in making a podcast, I cannot recommend Spotify for Podcasters enough. Dude, it is so freaking easy. Seriously, Spotify for Podcasters lets you create and then distribute your podcast, and you can even earn money from it, man. And you don't need any fancy equipment. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can just start creating today. And you can do video podcasts, too, like I do. Just download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Started today. The countdown is running at five, four, three, two, one. The Mikey Podcast. Yo, and welcome back to another retrospective episode of the award-winning Mikey Podcast, a hysterical take on news, life, current events, and so much more, because that's what this episode is. It falls in the the so much more category. Anyway, this is day 28 of 31 podcasts in 31 days. And I'm going to take you way back to a, to a much simpler time, to a time when probably getting high quality cannabis items delivered to your door from higherelevation.com was not something you would ever have thought of. Completely unheard of, actually. And promo codes probably weren't even a thing back then either. Higherelevation.com. Use promo code Mikey. You can save 20%. I'm talking about the 90s. The last great decade. The only great decade. The best decade. At least in everybody's opinion. Before I get this started, I got to take a minute uh, and, and tell you to subscribe to this podcast. You get access to videos and e- exclusive subscriber only past episodes. And starting in February, we're back to the early access stuff for subscribers only and more subscriber content is on the way. It's less than 10 cents a day and you can help support independent content creation like this, like this podcast, like it is. Anyway, let's just move on because it's Saturday. You don't, you know, you don't want to get into all this stuff. We don't, have to, we don't want to be heavy on a Saturday, right? It's the weekend. We want to have a good time. We want to enjoy whatever it is that we're doing. Maybe you're working in the yard. It's like, probably not. It's 50 degrees outside. It's a little cold. But it is, I think the sun's out, so that's kind of nice. But anyway, it's a Saturday. So, you know, I don't want to do news. I don't want to do something that's going to have your head all like, the fuck is going on in the world? The world is a jacked up place. Like, There's a lot of crazy stuff happening right now with riots and protests and all those things. And I don't want to talk about any of that stuff, at least not right now, because it's Saturday. So let's get the Saturday podcast started. I want to talk about the 90s. I want to talk about how good life was back then if you were alive in the 90s you're one of the true ogs in my opinion you got to live life before the internet and social media ever took over we actually had to go outside and play with our homies and stuff like we'd ride our bikes all around the town nobody for hours no one would even care where the hell your family didn't give a shit about you this is go 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 ride go be do not come back into it's what is it 10 o'clock in the morning do not come back until the, the street lights come on if you do, you're grounded. We had to use our imaginations and come up with things to do. Imagine that. Imagine kids having to use their imagination these days and go outside and play and come up with a game. <sighs> Jesus, try to try to suggest that to the kids. And they're like, what are you, crazy? I'm not. Get out of here. I'm not going outside. Back then, the only thing we had to worry about was getting grounded for actually not coming home, you know, for staying out too late. It was a time when we didn't share every single aspect of our lives with strangers on the internet because there was no internet. Al Gore didn't invent it yet. And just things just moved a little bit slower. You know, I feel like time move time moves by really fast right now. Am I wrong? Like it seems like it's speeding up. I don't know what that is. I think that's an actual real thing that's happening. The time actually really is speeding up. I could probably do an episode on that some other time, but back then in the nineties, Things just move slower. Maybe it's because our mind wasn't so occupied with things all the time. Because we didn't have a screen in front of our faces all the time. That stuff makes time go by really fast. You know, we had more opportunities to be bored and just kind of get lost in our thoughts. Nowadays, they don't want you to think. They want you to be, they want you to watch sports. They want you to play a game. Just keep your face in a screen, scroll through TikTok, whatever it is. Back then, we didn't have these things. So I'm going to talk about the real MVPs of the 90s. The things that we did have that the kids today don't have. I'm talking about those classic video games, you know, the way the movies, just the way life was, you know, we had to physically go and buy VHS tapes and DVDs. That's don't do that anymore. If you wanted to watch something specific, you had to go search for it and see if you could buy it or wait for it to be on TV, you know, because TV shows only came out every week or whatever. And then let's just say it was the end of the season. They left you on a cliffhanger. Now what? Now you're stuck. You got to wait six months before the next episode. That shit sucked. 
but it was a good time back then. Nowadays, kids, man, they got streaming services. You got Netflix, you got Hulu, everything right at the you know the t- tip of your fingertips. You just, on demand, everything you want. There's no excitement in that. There's no anxiety in that. The 90s were riddled with anxiety, and that's why we are the way we are nowadays. <laughs> the anxiety-inducing 90s. No, but it was good. It was a good time. So in this particular episode, we're just going to have a little fun, get through it, because 31 podcasts in 31 days is a lot of stuff to come up with. This is a Saturday episode. I'm going to give you the top 10 things 90s kids could do that today's kids couldn't. Starting with number 10. <laughs> Remember passing notes in class? That was a lot of fun. If you were a 90s kid, of course you did this. You remember the thrill of writing a note to your friend or some girl who was sitting like right next to you and then maybe even worried about maybe a teacher might get, come and get it and find it. And then if, what if the teacher reads it? Holy crap, that was a whole different level of anxiety. Like, please, God, don't read it. Because if it's to a girl, you're like, do you like me? Check the box, yes or no. That's embarrassing. Nobody wants that. We were so pathetic back then. But it was all about the experience, man. That was part of growing up. Nowadays, you send a text, respond, yes or no, get out of here. DM, we send a DM and we're come out, slide into the DMs and get the hell out. (laughs) That's weird. That's what kids do, though. That's not fun. There's no rush in passing that note and hoping your crush doesn't see it. If you're talking about a girl, there's no, there's no, there's no good time in worrying that your teacher is going to see it or read it out loud. That was, it's yeah, you think about the anxiety, but man, that's, that was part of growing up. I just get mad if you're left on red and she doesn't respond or he doesn't respond or whatever gender they think they are nowadays. <laughs> it's going to piss off the gender neutrals. Number nine, grunge. Grunge was awesome, man. Flannel shirts and freaking chain wallets. Grunge took over the world, dude. It was like it was like a revolution. Kids, I know, I know a lot of kids still listen to grunge, and that's totally great. That's fine. But they don't really understand the cultural significance of behind the grunge movement and how it honestly changed the world. It really did. It bands like Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, unfortunately. I'm not a Pearl Jam fan, but the fact is, is they were so much different than the garbage hair metal that was out from the 80s. You know what I mean? And it was it, it was rebellious and it had this attitude. And it was just what the kids in the 90s needed because we needed something so much different than what our older brothers and sisters were listening to or even our parents or aunts and uncles. It wasn't a crap. It was garbage. The 80s music was not great. It was a game changer for rock music. It totally changed it. Musicians and bands for, for years still to this day, it, grunge, it, it has an influence on them. It was awesome, man. And sadly now, you know, other genres, just like other, every other genre, you know, it, 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 got, it got corporatized and it got repackaged and it for wider audiences and whatever over time. And it is what it is. It's fine. But that's, the early 90s stuff, that's what I'm talking about. The early 90s when grunge first hit the scenes, man, it was amazing and it was awesome to be a part of that. Number eight, the Nintendo Game Boy. This little guy was the holy grail of handheld gaming. I'm not sure, yeah, there has been a bunch of different versions of this thing over the years. You got the Nintendo DS, uh, the Nintendo Switch, which is dope, by the way. But the Game Boy was the OG. You know what I mean? It was the king of, hand, of the handheld gaming world. Remember, remember those one games like before? Before the Game Boy, it was like you know, this little handheld football game was just these little dots on the screen, or maybe there was one that was a baseball. That was trash. When the Game Boy came out, it was like you were actually playing a video game. When Game Boy Color came out, it got even better because the original Game Boy kind of sucked a little bit, but it still, we loved it anyway, man. It was, and it was the most popular handheld gaming device of the time. And it ran, I think it came up with, it came in 89, 88. It was late 80s. And I know it went well into the 90s. It, it was a generation defining system. You know what I mean? It was awesome. And it retired. I think it went well past the nineties. I think they did at least versions of the game boy probably went, were going on up until the two, like two thousands, mid 2000, 2005, 2004. But up until that point, you know, up until some of these other gaming systems came out, everybody had a game boy or desperately wanted one. It was the, think about it. When you were a kid, Going on those road trips with your parents, it was the it was the ultimate companion. So you'd have to listen to that crappy music. They were the air supply and all that stuff. Nobody wanted to hear that stuff. Take it to school, and you were that you were the envy of all your friends, even waiting in line. It kind of almost like if you think about it now, it sort of set the stage for all of us staring at our phones right now and standing in lines. Nobody talks to each other anymore. We just stare down. We all have neck problems because of it. Number seven, 
one of the best things of the 90s was the candy. I know you could still get some of this candy nowadays, but we know it's poison, so it's not as good. In the 90s, we didn't know that the candy necklaces and, and pixie sticks and, and candy cigarettes, we didn't know it was that bad for us. We just loved it, and we ate it all the damn time. And it, and it didn't matter. Pop rocks, whatever, we were eating them. We, and we thought if we ate pop rocks and with cocaine, our stomachs would explode. Uh, did I say cocaine? No, not cocaine. I meant Coca-Cola. Where's my mind? That was a fraudulent slip. I don't even do coke. It's been like a thousand years since I've touched that shit. That was weird. <laughs> What's going on? It's early. Anyway, pop rocks and coke. Not cocaine. The, the soda. Make your stomach explode. But I guess maybe if you put a little cocaine in there, it might make your stomach, stomach explode too. I don't know, man. But it didn't. It really didn't. Remember those baby bottles? Those little baby bottle pops? That was delicious. It's like a little sucker in the form of a baby bottle. Why would he? Why did we have that? That was so weird. A baby bottle? That was so weird. I guess things in the '90s were a little bit weird, but we loved it anyway, man. It was the '90s. It was it was it was just good times, dude. Number six. This is one of my favorite things, and something for me is is the, the best memories of my life is like roaming the neighborhood unsupervised in the 90s doing whatever the hell i want to like i said at the beginning of this just leaving and staying gone for hours and hours and no one knows where the hell you are you don't have a phone you don't have a gps device you got nothing you're just roaming the streets like wild animals without a care in the world dude no tracking devices your mom can't call you just pure freedom good times and it wasn't just because our parents were cooler back then, though. It wasn't just because they just, ah, you know, they don't give a shit about you. It was, honestly, I think that the 90s was a much safer place. Or it, at least it seemed that way. Maybe maybe it's just because we didn't know that people were out there eating babies and stuff like that. I don't know. Our parents did care, I think. I think they did, right? Because think about it, today's kids can't even go outside, step a foot outside without a chaperone. Some parents are like, hey, be back. Be back before the lights come on. Be back before what? I'll be back whenever the hell I feel like it. In the 90s, didn't matter. Street lights come on? No, I'm staying. I'm going to stay out another hour. But that's when you get grounded. But I did it anyway. Nobody really cared, though. I, I, I swear to God, I don't think my family gave a shit, man. I don't think my mom cared if I ever came back. If I did, it could be 10 o'clock. And I come walking indoors. She's like, oh, how was your day? You don't care. You didn't even know I was gone. You thought I was in the basement the whole damn time. Well, that's some therapy stuff right there. Number five. Who remembers this? This you got this is old school right here. TGIF. Balky Bortokamus. Is that was that what that guy's name is? This was this was from this picture, this from Perfect Strangers. Oh, by the way, yeah, if you're a subscriber, you can see all the pictures. Freeloaders, you're not seeing the pictures. You're missing out. Freeloaders, 10 cents a day. Uh TGIF was a staple of 90s culture. And it was honestly, it was great for families to bond. I remember sitting around with my mom and even her boyfriend at the time, or my sit my mom and my sisters, and me watching some some quality sitcom entertainment. That's what that was, man. It was a time when TV shows we're, we're still really a big part of people's lives, to be honest with you. And TGIF was like, it was wholesome. It was wholesome TV, man. It was a popular destination. These shows were funny and relatable. They dealt with life issues. People people were able, people could resonate with with these shows. And, and man, I was a kid. I don't know. I just watched it. It was a good time. Belky Bortokamus was hilarious. And I have a lot of fond memories of that. I think a lot of people do, too. I think if you're listening to this podcast and you think back to the 90s and TGIF, those were probably some good times in your life. Maybe. Some people are probably getting beat up, but I'm just saying it probably happened. Maybe yeah, there was probably abuse going on in some people's families. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean, now I'm triggering you and I'm bringing up bad memories from the '90s. Whatever, it's got to take the good with the bad. I always say that. Uh, number four, remember Carson Daly? TRL, dude. TRL was was awesome. You'd rush home to watch TRL. You'd just turn it on. You have time you weren't paying attention. It was just on. You never know Eminem would show up there. Who who knew was going to show up at TRL? It was always somebody random. That was a huge cultural phenomenon of the 90s. For those for kids listening right now, you have no idea. This went into the early 2000s, and it was like must-watch TV for anyone. If you wanted to stay up to date with the latest music and pop culture news, did you had to watch TRL. You had the countdown. This is like the top 10 songs, top 10 popular videos of the week and whatever. A lot of times, same video was the same number one video for 27 weeks in a row and shit like that. But it was based on viewer votes, which was cool. And it had live performances and interviews and a lot, like just a lot of crazy antics and stuff. It was a really good time. It was fun to watch. It was a defining show for that decade. And for people like me growing up, it even started launched careers of hella stars, hella artists, hella, hella actors and, and musicians, and even Carson Daly, as I mentioned. I don't know. What's he doing nowadays? Is he still uh he's still over on NBC? I know he was. He was doing something with the Today Show, but 
don't know what his deal is, but good good for him. Is he still on the radio? I don't know. He was doing a countdown. He had all kinds of things going on for a while. He was a busy guy. Number three, this is one of the best ones, dude. AOL Instant Messenger. You can't use that. That's I know you. We got there. The people got what we got. What is that? What is a Facebook messaging app? I don't know what it's called. There's a bunch of different. I'm trying to think of it, but there's a bunch of different messaging app out messaging apps out there now. But nothing was like, nothing was like AOL Instant Messenger, man. In the late, the late '90s, AIM was it was like a rite of passage for pretty much all teenagers. You had your buddy list. You could you could, you have your away messages. It was super easy to use, and then you connect with people all over the world, people you didn't even know. And then they started make, like creating chat rooms that you could connect to from AIM, dude. I remember even when I first got in the radio, that was one of it was the, you know it was one of the first forms of communication, and not first because we had the phones and stuff, but you know what I mean. Like that was anybody could reach out to us at that time if you because the phone lines were always busy every time we called the radio station in the 90s the phone lines were always busy by the way radio secret i'm gonna put it out there we press a button to make the phone lines busy it's not like people are always calling us we want you to think we're way cooler than we are let's move past that um but yeah so so you could send a little message to aim a little instant messenger that was weird starting off and it because it was new and so people would send weird shit man People still send weird shit, DMs. It's like almost like a direct, it almost like is the original DM. It's, it's gone now, but it's, it's pretty much everything else nowadays, though. It's like, it's instant messenger, or Instagram DM, Facebook Messenger, whatever else you can get messages. It's a fucking iMessage nowadays. But number two, tell me if you had one of these, because I'm pretty sure almost every single family had the see-through landline phone. Remember when these phones, remember when phones like connected to walls, actually, you could hang it up and it was like a cord. Holy crap. I remember I had this freaking cord in our house had to be a hundred feet long because I would be like, oh, I would take it from the kitchen and I would walk the phone all the way upstairs into the bathroom and then all the way downstairs into the basement and be on the phone from the kitchen because the cord was so goddamn long. I don't know what the hell we were thinking. And eventually we got a cordless phone, but cordless technology wasn't. In in, in early 90s, it still wasn't really mastered. Sometimes it would pick up your neighbor's conversations. It was weird. But sometimes you can tune in. You're like, oh, what the hell are you talking about? What? These people are having phone sex. That's weird. Anyway. But most kids don't even know what the hell the landline even is. Who has a landline anymore? Nobody has a landline. Why do you have a landline? Probably if you have a landline, it's because your cable company tricked you into getting a landline with their cable service and internet. You don't need it. I don't know why they, they they do that just so they can sell you stuff because how many phone calls do you get on that? Probably none. And the phone calls that you do get are probably just telemarketers. But it was like having a little mini science experiment in your house, though, because it was clear and you could see it. You can see it happen. Like, look, it's it's ringing. You could see the thing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Those phones were awesome, though. It was like you, you could see the inner workings of it, man, like some sort of fucking wizard phone. It was like having an iPhone before iPhones even existed. It was the coolest phone out there. But not everybody had one. Some people just had regular boring old phones. Poor people like myself. Let's move on to number one so I can wrap up this podcast and move on with my day. I'm talking about the number one thing that 90s kids were able to do that kids today can't do and will never be able to do. Let's go to Blockbuster and rent a movie. What a great time that was. The good old days, like wandering the aisles of Blockbuster, trying to decide between whatever the comedy or rom-com or whatever the hell is going to be a cartoon who the hell knows anything it was like being a kid in a candy store only except it wasn't it, it wasn't a candy store and you probably weren't even a kid you were probably a teenager and you were just checking out movies man i would spend hours just walking around blockbuster at least it felt that way i feel like i pissed off the people that worked there because i would never leave what are you still doing here pick your movies and go don't rush me it takes time you know because you get three movies what do you you rent you got to rent three movies for the whole weekend you need a movie every single night you know, and then they had these deals. If you rent five, you buy three, get, you rent three, get two free. Like, oh, well, now I got to get five. So it's going to take some time. You can't rush me, Blockbuster. Calm down. And the great thing about it is, is if you had the membership, you get free popcorn and free soda refills. So that was dope, too. Not everybody knew that. How does that was, that? was that everywhere or was that only just at mine? Anyway, Blockbuster was a good time, dude. And I have a lot of really good memories attached to renting movies from Blockbuster and this other place called Midnight Video that my dad would take us to, which I think was just a local place. 
well, I don't know, maybe it was maybe it was a chain. I'm not sure, but just a, just a lot of good memories from the '90s and going and renting movies and even video games. Because then it got to the point where you could start renting video games, and you could even rent video game systems if you didn't have the video game. And it was Blockbuster was dope, dude. But all good things must come to an end, right? And in that case, Blockbuster, you had the rise of, like I already mentioned, the streaming services, Hulu, Netflix, or whatever. But it does seem like Blockbuster should, they kind of dropped the ball on that. You know, they should have been the leader in, in, in the streaming. But they didn't. They didn't focus on that. They didn't think it was going to be, they didn't think it was going to be anything, and they fucked up. <laughs> this is rude. And there you have it. Those are the top 10 things from the 90s uh, that, you know, in retrospect, I guess were a little weird in some of them, kind of. In a way, maybe. I don't know, man. From the iconic Game Boy, Sugar Rush, from the unique candies, and just being able to just roam the streets and do whatever the hell you want to, man. Watching shows like TGIF and TRL. Good times, dude. The 90s were a decade that now it can only just be nostalgic, but it's a feel-good nostalgia. Simplicity. Things were different than they were today. And not to mention just better. Things were just better. Sure, we didn't have smartphones, we also didn't have to deal with the constant distraction of social media notifications going off all the time or the pressure of having like the perfect Instagram aesthetic. Screw that. And let's not forget actually talking to people instead of sending a text message. There's something about that real human connection that I know I make fun of it and I say I don't really like people, but it is, it's better. It's a little different. It's just, it's just a time when things were simpler and just a whole lot more fun in my opinion. Either way, well, some of these things may seem a little outdated now. They will probably hold, for most of us, they hold a little special place in our heart. We'll always go back and we'll remember it. And we talk about it to our kids and our kids will be like, God, you sound so fucking old. Why are you talking about this? Shut up. Grow up. Get over it, Dad. It's old. But it will always be the best decade, the best decade, and the last best decade. So let's rise up, man. Let's, let's, let's grab, a, grab a glass of Surge if I had some. Toast to Surge and snort a line of a pixie stick. <laughs> No, don't do that. That's going to burn. It's not good. But cheers to the 90s, man. Thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with episode 29. Oh, my God. It's almost done. I honestly can't wait. But then we get back to still. It's not like I'm going to stop doing it. It's just we have other other ways of doing things. I'm not going to do a podcast every single day. But tomorrow, episode 29 of 31 Podcasts in 31 Days. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. The Mikey Podcast.